So we create some um, maps for the creators. And right now we're going to use inside the view and see how we can use to utilize those maps for the color distribution and for terrain high field creation. So in a view, we're going to create a simple terrain. This is non fractal one. Uh, next, we'll go to edit this terrain. You can see right here, we have a basic terrain. We'll go to disable edges, so we'll have a flat. Okay, the next, this terrain, it will be a very high resolution. So what I want to do, it is keep it same resolution as the high field. In this case, I get the best details without interpolations. So we'll go to increase to actually 4000. So it's a very high resolution will be. Okay, it's take one thing to doing this is take a little bit long time on original regenerations. But this is nice because after this, we don't need to worry about this details regeneration because they already will be created for us. But we're going to click and open loaded our materials. So let's go right here open. And we'll go to navigate in our fold. Okay, creators. And we have right here high field. So let's select the main high field. We open and we'll go bring this all the way picture 100%. Let's click OK. And you can see right in this area, second, there you go. Let's finish rendering. And here we have our um, craters. And you can see we have it bigger, smaller, all this. Uh, don't worry if it's maybe a little bit too flat. We always can pop back this back in if we need it. Right now we we'll go click OK. So next let's select our camera. And I want to take this camera and bring a little bit above, maybe a little bit more than a little bit, just above, and we'll go look down on our terrain. The reason why we look down so I can see the color distribution. Also I'll work with terrain. I'm just taking scale a little bit up. So if you work in Terragen, and you can save file as a Terrigen format. It's a little bit nicer because when you import it, it's also import the height of your field, so it's more accurate resolutions. Uh, you can still adjust, but overall in a view, we sometimes need drag and readjust how we want it. Um, in a Terrigen, it's kind of will do if you have a special format. Uh, will do for you. So okay, right here we have our terrain. Actually, before we open, let's be sure we set to one. Um, we're going to use it uh, as a mapping will be object parametric. So we want to keep it to same resolution for this coloring. And this is okay for our base. Actually, it's work very well on the coloring. Next, let's go ahead and add some um, maybe flow or some effect. I think flow will work very well. So we'll go create a new layer. And I'm just going to name them with the same name as I'm going to using masks with what we're creating or splat maps, whatever we can call them to cover up this. Okay, so we create this one. I'm going in color and let's put it something very bright red for now. So we can see where distribution will go. Next, we'll go inside the transparency, going to global transparency. Okay and enable variable transparency, edit function. So right here in the function editor, we are going to add new node, projected texture map. And we'll go also select this map. Let's go to browse to our files again. And we'll go to browse to our craters. And I want to select this flow. Let's click OK. And we'll select now transparency to our flow. Of course, it won't work. You can see how the distribution does not work properly. Reason is we need to switch how say to object parametric. This is number one. And also you can see in preview, they're going um, inverse. So we need it inverse our invert our colors. And that is kind of layout very nicely. So before modify colors, I want to do add another layer. And this way we can see how they also will interact. So on this one, let's go to call rocks flow. Okay. 
Okay, next, um, let's select color, we'll edit color and let's put some something other opposite green color, for example, we can see it. We'll go in transparency, 100% variable. So now it's invisible, kind of, because we still have it gray on this one. Let's go to edit this function. In some cases, this is exactly the same steps as we did before. So we go right there, we'll go select map, we'll go to rock flow. So what do we select it? Um, going to transparency, connect grayscale and inverse it. So right here you can see we have those rocks in other places. Let's go create new and again, oops, we need object parametric for this. So the other distribution go properly. Um, also, if you notice why I say scale, if we don't also change global scale, for example, if it was three, you can see how now it's all distorted. So be sure this one is what before we set to one, so they all properly. Okay, let's go next. Uh, maybe add some deposits and where, and we can do also uh, rocks height if we want separate rocks. But I don't think we need to do all of them. Again, this just example, you can see what we're going. So let's go to um, deposit. And deposit will just go select maybe purple. Uh, go to transparency. Okay, let's set object parametric as I remember. Right here, go variable, edit function, add new text project a texture. Go to loaded our files. We go right here, loaded our uh, deposit. Okay, we want to invert colors and connect a transparency to this. So if we apply in some areas right there, you can see hardly, but a little bit right there, you can see discounting compared to this. And it's what many times happen is just small adjustments, which will modify with colors, but overall is give it nice transition. It's what we're going after. Okay, let's go create one more. And we'll call this where. Okay, change to the parametric, global transparency, variable transparency. Uh, one thing, keep in mind, some of them will stack one on top of another one. So after prioritization them, it's kind of important. And we'll look a little bit on this in a second after we'll stop uh, creating new one. So we'll go right here. And this is our where one. Again, it's almost black. And if we invert, you can see it will be hardly visible. And we'll go transparency right here. Okay, nice things about these maps, we also can use, you notice, them to connect to bump map or other effects. So if we want to add more to this, not just the coloring, so that could be also work very well for us. Okay, let's go back. It's object parametric. And coloring can be yellow as example. So again, not necessarily don't see that much, but they kind of apply to each other. So what I was saying about edges, so sometimes maybe we want to flow because layers, um, they kind of stack flow on top. If we have some more rocks, they will go over the flow and cover some of those areas. But because I know flow will be the highest one, I'll probably put on the bottom. But remember, you can put it them in different areas. So if, for example, notice right here, we have some green dots over red ones. So we take flow and we'll put this flow above the rocks. Now this is covering them. So it's covered some of those areas. Be sure when you create layers and you stack them, you want to be sure, uh, biggest one or whatever you want to be on the bottom and other ones add because otherwise they will interact a little bit differently. And of course, if you want to reduce uh, string, you can use it alpha boost to reduce some of that. Okay, as we're here, let's go to finish our thing. So we'll go to modify flow. We'll go to add flow, maybe kind of maybe darker color right there. So we can see them a little bit better. Okay, let's go to the rocks. 
edit color and we'll just put it slightly bluish but a little bit more to the white so kind of add those almost like white rocks around okay let's go to the deposits and we'll add deposit a little bit darker so it will go right this area so you can see it's making them even a little bit more darker okay and same with the where edit and where just to be different we'll add leave it discoloring so um we also if you look on the map we have it also uh high rock we have it also high field craters we had many different things so for example if i want to add other ones actually you know what let's just example let's go to high field Creators. Let's go to Object Parametric. We'll go to add a little bit pinkish to this. Transparency, global transparency variable. Okay, we'll go edit function. Texture map project map. Okay, project it. We'll go open. We'll go open um, creators, high field creators. We'll go open that one. Okay inverse invert colors connect transparency okay so they added so we can also going and add additional to these colors natural grain let's add a little bit more colors to that okay so right here on the creators you can see a little bit yellowish because it's not so dramatic colors we could create red and other ones what do you want you want the subtle color changes that is what make very realistic look on that okay um next let's go to atmosphere editor we'll switch to the global diversity pop up sunlight a little bit more i just saturated our colors sky fog at little bit on the distance okay we'll go to our sunlight and let's bring sunlight a little bit like right there to the side so we have it i want to just create a little bit more shadow and maybe you know what it's too dark let's bring a little bit higher up okay and i want to edit shadow and set to shadow map okay and let's go ahead and render so i'm going to pause this tutorial for just a little bit till render is completed and we'll come back when the render is done okay so right here our render is completed so you now let's disable after coloring and you see we have a nice um, distribution so beside the all this high field we also have it flow nicely done we have those teeny tiny speck of rocks we have a deposits a little bit coloring on the uh, craters so it's overall i think it's very nice uh, map done inside the world machine and we use the view in current situation to just apply those maps and see how they will look in 3d render